All right, maybe you're into doing a bit of reading more than just watching our videos. So this is gonna be a good one for you. We partnered with Art of Boat Repair, a website, to showcase reviews about marine products and services. You can show your support of these helpful written articles by going to artofboatrepair.com and press follow us in the link below this video. You can join us to get helpful written tips from us and from other sailboat cruisers and other sailing channels that you will probably or certainly recognize. If any of your friends or family are thinking about getting into boating, they should also check out Art of Boat Repair. They'll get a real sense about what it takes to maintain a boat, uh, what products and services are useful to living that cruising lifestyle, and they'll get it from the perspective of really micro-budget cruisers such as ourselves. It's the little things that I love here along the Mayan coastline, including the tiny baby tropical fish that can sometimes be found in the tide pools. These two were having a bit of a disagreement, the butterfly fish and the damselfish being a little bit fiery. We were preparing to deliver the vessel Sea Rooster from Mexico to Guatemala. The day before, the engine failed to start as we were making our way back to the dock. So it was time to take a closer look at the battery situation. But then you try and crank the engine and they got no juice. It's still showing a good high voltage. We dug out the electrical tester and separated the one newer lead acid battery from the two older gelled ones. I think this battery good, huh? 13? Yeah. And everything was running, the fridge, every, everything that was on was running off, was that running off this one battery because I think the other ones are DIE dead. With the two old gels still hooked up to the solar charge controller, the problem became a bit more obvious. Right now, the only two batteries connected are the 10 to 12 year old batteries. They're showing very high voltage. And then what happens? Why are they dropping suddenly? Yeah. Okay, you just turn on the refrigerator, they jump down to the 11.2. Yeah, that's a good sign. That's soon the fridge. And then, but then why does it jump back? And then they kind of try to jump back up. The voltage on the very heavy, very high quality, and very expensive gel batteries was erratic. A clear sign that they might be finished. The installation date confirmed that they were finished indeed. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. This nah. is my husband's phone. <laughs> With the fan pointed on Robbie, it's nine and a half inch maximum. We measured the box area for new batteries. Let's write on the batteries the date. Around here in Mexico, the only batteries that we would be able to find affordably and before our visas expire would be the conventional lead acid golf cart type batteries. Can you check if the power is on one or two right now? Right now it's off. Put it on one, please. Lights and shit, see if it got, like, the cabin lights, you keep the cabin light switches on when you switch off the main switch, but, okay. Batteries finally arrived, but we would also need to do some organizing within the impossibly chaotic mess of wires. Sometimes drawing out a diagram of the current and or desired wiring usually helps to clean up some of this chaos. On the left, the new batteries, and on the right, the switch panel, battery charger, solar charge controller, and engine. The battery selection switch in the middle. Her, her battery of her engine is only charged by the engine, or by the generator, or the, so, or, or the battery charger. I don't think her, uh, the, bat, the good battery was sending more power to the shitty batteries instead of the engine. Yeah. This was something complicated to ponder over as our visas for Mexico were quickly expiring. In the meantime, we would also install some new bilge pump hoses where needed. Ah, that fits well. Ah, that's perfect. Okay, I need one, two. 
three. You need three uh, clamps. Clamps. One, two, three. On top of that, most of the navigation instruments were not working either. So we dug out some of our old wires from our own boat and tried rewiring the chart plotter, depth sounder, and autopilot. I disconnected the, the connection between the, the chart plotter and the instrument since the chart plotter was not working. It's been spazzing, I think, was that connection that was being tricky. So for now, the chart plotter is disconnected from the other instruments. powered itself down. No, it's acting a little weird. Some incredibly good news. The MIDI keyboard for upgrading the music of these videos finally arrived, sent to us by our generous viewer Sean, who several years ago also sent us our old GoPro 5. now updated our camera gear with a GoPro 9, which arrived just in the nick of time, the day before leaving on our delivery. We tested out its low light capabilities as soon as it arrived. Also before leaving, we provisioned for three people, one cat and one dog. We were looking at about 400 nautical miles to Rio Dulce. That's an estimated three to five days of travel. We tried to assemble more than two weeks worth of food though, just in case they would quarantine us for two weeks upon arrival in Guatemala. I made about 30 delicious energy bars for night shifts, but these things were quickly devoured before we arrived at our destination. Sea Rooster is a 44-foot Catalina Morgan center cockpit. As you come in, kitchen that's a little bit smaller than I like for my taste, but good kitchen. She needs work every day. We're finding new work that Seda's going to have to do on the boat. Pump for the head is not working. Window work to stop moisture, rain from coming in. Got a gigantic engine room in the little hallway here to going towards the back cabin. Lots of room for Robbie to have installed the batteries, new batteries in here. And you walk through the little hallway, which is good headroom for me, but I know that uh, taller people might have to crouch a little bit. And then you come into gigantic aft cabin here. Seda has nicely given us the back cabin for the duration of this trip. And the most interesting part of all about this boat, in my opinion, and a lot of people who come in, is the head, the shower in here, you have a mini bathtub. Hi, Ravi. Get in the boat! Come on! Will we leave without you? Without a working chart plotter, but fortunately with a functioning depth sounder and several paper and digital chart apps on our phones. Ah, uh, yes. Fishing rods. The time came to cast off the lines. There's only a small space to spin this 44-foot Morgan around in this canal. And in the process, we said goodbye to our lovely Inesperado, which we hope to return to very soon to get her sailing again as well. I cleaned up the fenders and the lines while Robbie explained to Seda the art of steering. Much more responsive and I can let the rather go now. Choco and Layla the cat became more acquainted. With a cat in one hand and the helm in the other, Seda began to receive her sailing lessons from Captain Robbie. Head up into the wind so that we can raise the mainsail. We started out motor sailing with only the mainsail up as the Genoa was not holding while we were beating into the wind. It's the jolly season! Christmas time! Holiday! Oh, special cookie! 
Panettone, the best way to celebrate the coming holiday season on the boat. Like a decoration and a fruitcake all in one. At this moment, we were heading north, not south. In order to check out of Mexico on the boat, according to the local harbor master, we would need to hire an agent if we wanted to do that from here in Puerto Aventuras. We called the agent, and he wanted almost $300 US, which we did not have. We inquired about the checkout at Isla Mujeres up north, and checking out there would be a little more do-it-yourself. And it would not require an outrageous fee. So north we went, adding an extra 100 nautical miles to our entire journey, everyone in a festive holiday spirit. It was another shakedown cruise to find out which shrouds needed tensioning too. Robbie would have to determine if there was any sideways bend or sag in the mast before tightening. Choco was quiet and sleepy, perhaps seasick, but he didn't puke and he wasn't whining, so all was well. With the calm seas, we sailed along close-hauled, and Robbie collected some fish for dinner. One small Sierra mackerel, perfect for ceviche, to mix with our fresh tomatoes, cucumber, and parsley. I don't think it's gonna work, Choco. I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> what was it? Uh. And then shortly after, a large king mackerel for sharing with others and for searing lightly with salt, pepper, and olive oil in a frying pan. The wind died down as we approached Isla. The dolphins came out to play in the very shallow and current-filled waters surrounding the hotel zone of Cancun. It was all dolphins and rainbows around these parts. We dropped anchor in the grassy sand as close to the anchorage shoreline as possible because we didn't have a working outboard engine and barely a pair of oars.
Who's that guy, Trico? Who's that guy? We prepared for the upcoming day or two of checkout cha-cha dancing. First thing, we had to head to the Capitania de Puerto's office, which is along the main waterfront walkway, close to both the walk-on and vehicle ferry docks. Stop the whining. So what did you have to do? And I just give our usual papers, boat papers, copies, passport, make a crew list, the usual. I signed some, some liability paper. They seem like they're scared of boats damaging other boats and running away here. And Feel more liability papers than they seem to be more concerned that we're, we're not leaving without paying marinas than anything else. And other than that, we just needed our usual yeah, photocopies of our passports, and, and that's it. Papers, yeah. Very simple. Yep. What next? Next, right. the money, money, money we pay. We got <laughs> pay. 500. Yeah, 500 pesos for check in and check out. Yeah, yeah. We paid about 500 pesos or about 25 dollars US to the teller, and then we would have to show that receipt to the port captain. We're back to the harbor master. We have to give them this, and then they give us the document, and then we have to go to uh, immigration, and then come back again, I think so. Yes, every time you pay, you go and you give the receipt back, Yes. and then you, co you go on to the next step. While we waited for the processing of our port captain papers, we went for a little walking tour around the touristy downtown area. Next up, immigration, which is similar to the port captain visit. First you provide your documents and then you go and pay. Anchor up and now we were actually heading towards our destination. Justine, go forward. Forward? Tell me when it comes out. Sure. Too early. Too early for this. We said goodbye to the new and older friends in the anchorage and raised the mainsail again, somehow finding that headwind once again as we started south. remained well fed with Seda making fancy sandwiches, the cat making herself comfortable in her feline fashion. Bonito. And the dog gobbling up some fresh tuna. We sailed into the night along this coastline, which is familiar to Robbie and I, heading towards new lands in the upcoming days. Mm -hmm.